Hello, this video will give you tips on what to bring if you're coming to China for three months or more. Maybe you're coming to China to work, to study, or you're a traveling spouse. I've got approximately 11 top items that you should bring, and I'll briefly explain why you should bring each item. If there are any items I haven't mentioned and you're unsure about bringing or not, just write in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Now, I know what you're thinking, huh, why should I trust you, ew, ew, ew. You should trust me because I've been living in China for three and a half years. I lived in the south of China, I've lived in the north of China, I lived in the countryside, and I've lived in a big city. So, I'm very well placed to tell you what you should pack. Thank you. Let's begin. Number one, you should bring some traditional items from your home country. It could be traditional clothing, like this or it could be your country's flag, or it could be some postcards, especially postcards of famous landmarks. And you could also bring money from your home country. I highly recommend you bring items from your home country. Even if you're not coming to China to teach, you will be invited to give presentations on your home country and culture, or you may even want to ask if you can give a presentation. It could be at work, it could be at a social activity like Toastmasters or Rotary. Perhaps you volunteer one day and you want to show the local people um, pictures or money from your home country. Tip number two, you should bring souvenirs from your home country. Souvenirs can be gifts or they can be prizes. It's highly likely whilst you're in China you will be asking people for lots of favours. Perhaps you need them to help you buy something online, to get a SIM card, it could be anything. And you might want to give them a small gift as a way of saying thank you. It could also be um, gifts for your colleagues at Christmas time or Easter because your colleagues might miss, especially if they're foreign colleagues, they might miss um, food from, the, from their home country if you're from the same country. Or if it's a Chinese colleague, they might want to taste something from your home country like Cadbury's chocolate is always popular in China. So um, yeah, gifts and second, also prizes. So if you are a teacher, you can give out little prizes. Every year I do a pub quiz and I give prizes to the first team. So um, I usually give them key rings, um, postcards or pencil cases and pencils which are completely covered with London symbols and they really, really love those gifts. Tip number three, you should bring your favorite food. This is very important. Your favorite food and any food that is uncommon. So my favorite food is Marmite, and this is very uncommon in Asia, and I've never, ever, ever seen it in China. I did see it in Thailand, though. And also, um, I love Bourbons. Bourbons. Uh, I love these so much, I ate these in two days. Don't tell anybody. Anyway, bring your favorite food and anything that's uncommon. I'll give you an example. I've never, ever, ever found ground cinnamon in China. I found cinnamon sticks, but not ground cinnamon. So if you like baking or um, you just have a favorite food that you can't live without for a year or for six months, bring it with you. Of course, there are import stores in China. We usually call them Western supermarkets. And there are um, importers online such as on Taobao. However, their prices are a lot higher than if you buy it in your home country and bring it with you to China. And also, um, they're few and far between. You can't find Western supermarkets everywhere. Though, some of them do do delivery. So if you don't live in a big city with a Western supermarket, you can get it delivered to you. I actually have visited an international supermarket in Chengdu that delivers China-wide, but it's very expensive. Um, but I mean, they've got costs, so I totally um, understand their situation. Anyway, if you want to see a video of me and my friend Lauren, who has a YouTube channel, it's called Lauren's China Life, I'll put a link up here and you can see how amazing a Western supermarket can be. Um, but you can also see how expensive it can be. But that's a really fun video, so I highly recommend you watch that. It's a great collab video. Another reason you should bring your favorite food, maybe you'll have a bad day and you just want to um, like feel better by eating something, emotionally eating. Okay, maybe that's not like the best thing to promote, but you know, you had a bad day, you need a bourbon. Um, also, you might want to invite your colleagues or students or neighbors or friends to try some 
cuisine from your home country maybe you need a certain spice to make a certain dish to share with people i know around the holiday in november thanksgiving a lot of american friends were trying to find pumpkin something and they couldn't find it because they wanted to make pumpkin pie Oh my god, all the messages. Have you seen this can of pumpkin puree? I was like, no. So bring your must-have food items. Number four is toiletries. Bring your favorite toiletries. Most toiletries can be found in China, but do they fit your criteria? Are they natural? Are they animal cruelty-free? Are they non-whitening? Because white skin is... Um, really popular in Asia so a lot of things especially moisturizers and face masks have whitening agents in them so you need to bring your own toiletries also consider things like hair loss a lot of people complain about experiencing hair loss when they're in China there could be multiple causes uh, it could be stress it could be water quality it could also be hair products they're using so consider bringing your favorite shampoo and conditioner your favorite deodorant, your favorite toothpaste from your home country to China. However, don't bring too much. I know people who then suddenly have like 10 deodorant sticks. You don't need that many. But bring your favorite stuff um, that has the ingredients you like. And um, you can get things at Western supermarkets, um, but it'll obviously be more expensive. Especially hair dye, if you're looking for like um, blonde, that's really hard to get. So bring your favorite things with you. Connected with that is tip number five, bring your favorite makeup, especially if you have darker skin color and you want a foundation, um, anything that's non-white, you pretty much need to bring it yourself. Again, if you want cruelty free, bring it yourself. A lot of products, especially imported products to China have to be tested on animals. I think they're considering changing that law, but um, yeah, if you want cruelty free, then you have to bring it yourself from your home country. That's the best thing. Also, if you want things that are like um, non-GMO or whatever, then you have to bring it yourself. Also, back to point number four quickly. Um, toothpaste in China is a lot sweeter than it is in America. Because I had an American friend who told me he never had a cavity in his life. Came to China, was here for two years, and then got a cavity. And he blamed the sweetness of his toothpaste. He thought it had sugar in it. So uh, um, that's another sort of reason why you should bring your own products because um, you know what's in them because you can read the labels. That's the thing, like there could be good products in China. There are, obviously, but can you read the label to find them? Um, you can use translating apps on your phone. They take a photo, but how accurate is it? And um, the time as well. You'll save yourself time and money if you just buy it at home. Tip number six, you should bring your favorite supplements with you and things like protein shakes. Again, it's just to do with ingredients. You'll know exactly what you're getting. You'll be able to read the label on your vitamins or on your protein shake. If it's vegan, if it's NG, non-GMO, it's best to bring these things with you. I have successfully brought vitamins whilst living in China, but it was more expensive and more difficult than if I just brought them from England. I brought um, B12, and I brought some iron supplements on the internet um, but it took a long time to get them delivered and they were more expensive because they'd been imported um, also when I went on holiday to South Korea I brought some products whilst I was there as well just because um, they were more familiar they were in brands I recognized um, so a lot of times it's to do with accessibility and price there's a lot of the uh, rationale between or behind bringing stuff from your home country. It's probably cheaper and easier to get hold of if you bring it from your home country. Tip number seven is clothing. This is particularly important if you are a larger sized person. Most of the clothing in shops in China is for smaller people, slimmer people. So if you are medium or above, you're most likely have to buy things online but then you can't try it on and it will be difficult for you to return the items if you don't know any Chinese. There are some Western stores in China, especially in big cities like Shanghai and Beijing, but a lot of them are closing down. Forever 21 has gone and so has Old Navy. I'll put video links up here. I've actually done some investigative journalism and you can watch my videos where I tell you where, where they've shut down, why they've shut down and how much of a loss it is. But anyway, if you are a medium size or above in your home country, 
bring clothes with you like bring enough clothes with you for your duration I'll give you an example I'm usually a size 16 in England 14 on a good day but usually a size 16 you know average size anyway um, the point is in China guess what size I am four times XL four times not like one XL not two not three four times XL um, so I don't actually really go clothes shopping unless it's somewhere like H&M or Zara they do bigger sizes um, but yeah never in a traditional Chinese shop or even like a cool fashionable Chinese shop I'm not gonna get stuff that fits me um, you'd have to go online but like I said I don't know Chinese so I don't bother so bring stuff with you especially basic stuff get your leggings get your socks get your underwear and um, just bring enough clothes for the duration of your holiday maybe like buy one or two pieces whilst you're here but it'd just be easier to bring it from home now let's move on to tip number eight shoes similar vein if you are a medium size or above bring your shoes with you however I have successfully brought shoes online in China I have brought some trainers and I have brought some boots and they fit me perfectly however I did go to HMV no H&M and I tried the boots on then I ordered them online and the trainers again I brought I tried them on in a shop and then I brought them online so I always go to a shop try stuff on get the right size then I go online and I know my size and I know it fits um, so if you can go into a store try stuff on that's great personally this is tragic oh my god I actually can't buy women's trainers Ugh. I have to buy men's tra trainers I am a size 7 um, which is like nothing <laughs> excuse me but for some reason they stop women's trainers at a size 6 in China and then you just if you have got bigger feet than that you just have to get men's so I usually get men's trainers um, but it's fine I ain't mad I ain't mad. Tip number nine is bring some books with you if you like reading. And to be honest, even if you don't like reading, someone you meet might like reading. You can obviously get um, English books um, in China, but the availability is very low and the price is very high. I'll give you an example. In Beijing, a city that has a population of 28 million people, there are two bookstores that sell English language books. Just two. Um, so yeah the availability is crap you just don't find them everywhere and the price is high very high however there is in Beijing a charity shop called roundabout and they do sell secondhand books um, and there is an online platform where you can buy secondhand books but I would recommend you bring some of your own and then you can do swapping or you could um, sell them and then buy someone else's secondhand books I highly recommend that Tip number 10 is bring materials for tutoring. Now you might not be considering tutoring. If you already know, huh, no way I'm not tutoring, fine. If you're, in, if you're undecided about it, I would bring some materials, such as um, books for kids if you want to do tutoring kids. If you want to tutor adults, most of them want conversational English or business English. Um, maybe travel, but I'd say number one, conversation, number two, business then travel would be the third one um, so yeah no matter who you are no matter why you're in China can you teach my friend <laughs> seriously seriously can you teach my daughter can you teach my neighbor can you teach my cousin I swear to God every week I get at least one request to teach somebody English once a week at least so if you are interested bring some flashcards or bring some basic reading books or bring a textbook obviously again you can get these on Taobao in China um, but if you look in a bookstore in your home country you can check it out get a sense of whether it's a book you want to use or not um, so yeah but I mean books are very cheap in China when it comes to this kind like educational books are very cheap because they're usually um, printed like you can get books in of a different variety you can get an official book like this or you can um, buy a fake copy so it can be very affordable I've brought some really good textbooks from my local print shop they just print them out like they print the PDF for me I'm like thank you thank you tip number 11 is bring your favorite medicine however don't bring too much the number one things you're gonna need 
would be painkillers if you get a headache or something, period pain, whatever. And tip number two um, would be if you get an upset tummy. Um, that can happen quite a lot. When I was living in the south of China, um, I would get food poisoning about once a week, maybe twice a week from the canteen. Now I'm in Beijing, I only get food poisoning about once every two weeks. So anyway, um, pain, an upset tummy, definitely. And then anything else you need, and maybe you have hay fever or you have a condition or something, it can be hard to refill prescriptions. It's not impossible, but it can be hard, especially if you're not in a big city. Think as well about contraception. Um, bring that with you like cray cray. I'm always seeing people messaging in the group chats I'm in, where can I get the pill? because there are different types of pills and they have different side effects and some people can only use one and they can't use another. Bring it with you. Bring enough that will cover your duration here is my personal opinion. Now the final tip, and this is very important, I probably should have told you this is tip number one. Money. <laughs> okay, tip number 12, the final tip, bring enough cash with you. This this is Chinese money. Bring it with you. I don't care where you are. I don't care your circumstance. Bring cash with you. You're going to need to, okay? Um, bring enough for surviving at least one month without getting paid, without having a bank account, without having a phone number, without having your passport. Now, um, whether you're a student, whether you're being employed in China, whether you're a traveling spouse, no matter what you're told about you're getting a bank account as soon as you arrive, you're getting a phone number as soon as you arrive, you're getting paid on the second day, what? no. Bring cash in case things don't work. Anything can happen. You must bring cash. So the first time I ever came to China, I, let me see, I didn't get paid for three months. Three whole months of not being paid. In fact, all the teachers got together, we wrote a letter and said, we haven't been paid, we're running out of money now. Some people who had already run out of money and started using their own bank card from home. I luckily had enough cash and we were living in a very, very, very affordable place called Guizhou. It's in the south of China. Um, I could live on approximately a thousand RMB. No, I could live on, yeah. It was a little, it was very little anyway. I would say a thousand RMB a month was enough for me. Um, yeah, this, this goes a long way. I, I think it was, I didn't, yeah, I, I lived very well anyway. Um, I didn't need a lot of money at all. Vegetables, tofu, very, very cheap. Sweets, cheap. Um, but you need enough money for if you're not paid your salary or your um, scholarship or your stripend, bring cash, you have to. Now I remember when I was in England, the minimum I was allowed to change was 400 pounds. So whatever 400 pounds is, that's what I brought to China and it lasted me three months. Um, like I said, anything can happen. Um, it's and the thing is, you can't get a bank account without your passport, but you can't get your visa without your passport and the visa is the most important thing so usually your your passport is um, being processed for like two weeks to get your visa so you're in the country you're in china and you might not have a bank account for a while how are you going to be paid okay there can be delays unforeseen circumstances so bring cash anyway thank you for watching this video if you have any questions write them below if there's any topics you want me to cover let me know thank you for watching bye